Ludwig Godefroy is an architectural practice based in Mexico that is centered around residential architecture. Inspired by French and Mexican roots, the studio has over time explored the common points of monolithism and monomateriality, found authenticity in its design language, and grown appreciation towards time that all together make up for this theme of concordance that is carried along throughout the practice. So we have Ludwig with us today, and we will be chatting about the topic of finding authenticity in vernacular architecture. So, so happy to have you here and can't wait for this conversation. <laughs> Hello, nice to meet you. I'm very happy also to be here with you, not talking. So, so just tell me what you want to know and I will answer. <laughs> <laughs> it's our honor. So will you first tell us about your background and about the firm? Yeah, actually, it's part of my work and it's part also of my story, no? which is very important. Like when you're talking about concordance, no, because uh, basically my work is based on the on, on the on the mix between my two cultures. No, I was born in France and now I work and live in Mexico. And from uh, I'm coming from Normandy in France, no. So uh, basically, it's the the reason why you can see all the, the 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 presence of the concrete because I'm coming from the part in France where it was where where the D-Day happened, no. So it's like a mix between uh, bunkers from Normandy and pyramids, like pre-Spanish architecture from Mexico, no. So it's like what you can see. But my background, basically, I studied architecture in Paris. Uh, I graduated in 2006 in, in a school of architecture in Paris. And then I went to New York to work a little bit for a firm called Thomas Leiser Architecture. Then I moved to Barcelona, uh, worked with Enric Miralles and Benedetta Taglia in Barcelona. And finally, I moved to Rotterdam to work with Rem Collas OMA. And then after Remcolas OMA in Rotterdam, this is when I decided to move to, to Mexico and I worked for two years for a firm called Tatiana Bilbao Architecture. Mm -hmm. And so, and then in 2000, was 2011, I started my, my own firm, no? Ludwig Godfrey Architecture. That's cool. So just now you described about what influences you, but how would you describe your design approach then now? Well, now my design approach is a little bit like uh, it's really like Mexico became very important in my work no? because uh, I have a very European background and I worked before in Europe and I used to design in an, like with a very different style, another way, uh, much more sleek, much more uh, cold and uh, modern, no? like uh, uh, what, what, you, what, what you can see with the architecture of Rem Collas and all those uh, European firms, no? But when I uh, arrived, when I moved to Mexico and I discovered the pre-Hispanic architecture, so it became something for me like very important, no? And I, 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 I started to feel very passionate about uh, uh, pyramids and heavy architecture. And so this is a little bit why now when you, when you have this mix, which is a mix, uh, a strange mix, no, actually, that does not make sense for anybody except me. But for me, it makes sense to mix bunkers and pyramids because at some point, I can kind of feel that those two architecture they 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 they're pretty much the same. No, it's like uh, both the ruins. No, like uh, both they are like a monolithic architecture, blind architecture. No, it's an architecture like of walls without windows, without uh, uh, openings. No, uh, it looks like a little bit defensive. One is monument. It's it's a monomaterialistic architecture out of concrete and or out of stones. No, uh, the fact that it's a, both a ruins from different times. No, the Second World War or uh, the the the, the pre-Spanish time uh, in Mexico, but it makes also like the like this ruin looks very romantic. No, because they it's an architecture which has lost the the the, the original meaning of it. No. Uh, and so this is something you get they the both architectures they they're sharing so this is why i i started to feel that it's it, it was very interesting to mix a uh, both kind of architecture 
And I think it really shows in your works. You know, I actually think that they really communicate your appreciation towards um, history and locality. And exactly. And, and this is also like, now it's like it, 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 a little bit something like for me very important also also is the question of time no so uh, when you look at those ruins uh, you, you you can still feel that those ruins they're like entire pieces of architecture and the time was passing but the architecture is able to 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 reinvent uh, a new meaning no and so this is also why i'm trying to to work a little bit this way in in architect in my architecture uh, which is uh, using just a, a few materials but all the materials they have to be massive no and except and and when the time is passing those uh, this kind of architecture Architecture using uh, stone, concrete, uh, wood in in massive sections uh, will be able to get old, no, and able to 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 get cover uh, by a new coat of uh, the, the 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 patina of time, no, like the the time is becoming also part of the materiality of this architecture, no. So I'm trying instead of getting. Uh, that my architecture, because we, we all have to get all, all architecture, uh, when you deliver a new project, has to get all at some point. No? So what I'm trying to do is like I'm trying to, 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 to make my architecture able to, to, get, to, get, to get better looking uh, to, uh, instead of getting damaged no? uh, under the, ac the action of time. That's amazing. So what is vernacular architecture to you? But this is a little bit this, no, basically, no, it's like uh, my idea of vernacular architecture, uh, also it's because I'm, I, I was born in a small village in Normandy, no, like a 1,500 inhabitants uh, village in Normandy, so, uh, and it's a fisherman village, no, so basically when you live in a village, and I think it's pretty similar if you're in Indonesia or if you're in Mexico or if you're in France, no, like, when you go to the countryside, when you go to, to, to those small villages with fishermen around you, they're not looking for, for, for beauty. The beauty is here because they, 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 they would do something because they need it, no? Uh, it's very pragmatic somehow, the, the, the reason why they would design this way or the other way, no? And vernacular architecture basically is always based on, a, it depends, like if you live in a, in a part of the, the country where they have a lot of Rocks, they would make like an architecture out of rock, no? Uh, if you have more like earth, they would do something like based on earth, no? And this is a little bit what, 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 what the feeling I have, no? Like uh, what I've learned in my village, like my origin is just like a fisherman is very honest, no? Uh, he's, he's doing something because it has to have a reason, and, be, and the reason most of the time is the is the ocean, no? The, the condition, whatever uh, would respond to the to the necessity for him to 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 to, to work, to 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 live every day uh, with this this condition of the ocean, the storm the wind, the, the rain, no? Uh, and so this is a little bit this for me, the, the vernacular architecture that, I'm, that I have in my mind, no? This kind of uh, old uh, typical architecture, like honest, simple, and not trying to, 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 to fake anything, no? It's like, uh, it's not like, like when, you, when you live in Paris, when you're like uh, living in an urban uh, context, you, 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 you can, you can can fake a little bit your identity when you when you live in a village there is no need to fake anything no so it's a little bit like this also the vernacular architecture my idea of vernacular architecture because uh, of course we, uh, now we cannot uh, consider the same way of being vernacular because uh, we have the concrete, the concrete like uh, you would find concrete anywhere in the world. You would find uh, industrialized uh, product anywhere in the world. No, so it's not about uh, you dig, you dig on your uh, around your land or you cut the trees around your land and you build uh, the house with those materials. No, now it's a little bit more globalized. But I think with by doing a simple and honest architecture and uh, this architecture able to get all this is maybe a new way to create somehow a vernacular architecture if if the concept of vernacular still exists. Yeah. And in other words, I think the original or the traditional ways of doing things is the only thing that has been proven to stand the test of times, 
right? Like how people from maybe 20 years ago have successfully found strategies to withstand storms, for example, or other conditions. So it's really a nice way to even learn more about culture, about social conditions. Exactly. And also, you know, like uh, in Mexico, for example, this is also something uh, I don't work so much in Mexico City. I'm, I work more on the countryside, no? So it's also something like for me, like very important. Like I have to keep it simple because uh, I don't have specialized people who are building my, my, my architecture. It's just like regular workers, regular masons from the, from the, 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 the countryside, no? And this is also something I want to keep it simple for this reason, not because I want if I live, if I work in uh, in the Yucatan region of Mexico, or if I live, if I work in the uh, Oaxacan uh, region of Mexico, I want the local people to build my architecture because it's also part of it. No, it's like uh, it's doing like. Uh, somehow my my architecture is as a little bit it uh, is a little bit extravagant but uh, if you know how to build like a simple uh, building a, a simple square building of five by five by and doing like a, a five meter beam you can build my architecture because my architecture is a bit like a sculptural but very simple in terms of uh, technicity yeah so will you share with us about your project or is it a project or a philosophy concordance? It became a philosophy, no? It's basically <laughs> It, it became a philosophy and it's it, it's really linked to Mexico because uh, at the very beginning when I started to work in Mexico, I started to work in Mexico City, you know, and, and I worked, uh, uh, like I was doing uh, clubs and bars and restaurants, you no, know? uh, and at the beginning I had like a lot of finishings, you no, know? I was using wood, I was using leather, I was using copper, I was using a lot of uh, uh, finishing no and it was also all, all, all the time like sort of complicated because uh, for example if you want to use those uh, small venetian tiles no uh, in the bathrooms or like the, the the one we use like in the in the swimming pools no for example uh, so it's like a, it's it's very expensive and suddenly you know like you say you say okay just uh, you just have to glue it there on the wall uh, and you come back and and it's not straight no uh, and, and, and my client would come and say, but it's not straight. And I'm like, yeah, I know it's not straight. No, but what can we do? We cannot do anything, basically, no, because uh, it's already glued on the wall. No, so we just have to rip it down and buy it again and do it again in a, in, in a good way. No, and it was all, all the time like becoming annoying for me because I could feel my client like kind of uh, disappointed and sad. And, and it was like, if I'm if I'm using finishing just to to to, to put myself in in trouble, so I prefer not to do it anymore. No, so I decided not to use this uh, sort of tiles no anymore. And then it was the same with other finishing. And at some point, I I, I started to to reduce the 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 the, 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 the quantity of finishings. And I was just like, I don't want to use this anymore. I don't want to use this anymore. And I started to quit. No, and I started to simplify my architecture and in this way I discovered that basically it was just unnecessary like the finishing I was using before and I, and this is the moment when I started to 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 feel a little bit addicted to the to the idea to to keep it as simple as possible and only massive material no and this was also for me a way to simplify my way of working and to try to 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 avoid the, 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 those problems, no, and, and it became my philosophy because then I was like, wow, this is this is basically I'm having I'm having more fun and I, and I, and I feel way better to work this way. Yeah. So it's in general it became my philosophy for all my projects. Yeah, and in a way it becomes more timeless as well. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly, exactly, and also. Um, well, I'm a very big fan of the of brutalist architecture, no? Uh, as you can see, you know, all my project is like, a, uh, you have a lot of uh, raw concrete, no? Like the brute concrete. 
And it was, it, it's a little bit this, no? what I was talking about at, uh, at some point at the beginning that uh, I, I come from Normandy. So the, the, the bunkers from Normandy, for me, they're very important. No? Uh, it's part of my life. It's part of my uh, childhood. No? It's like uh, going to the, to, 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 to the ocean and playing inside of those uh, ruins, those, those, those old bunk, abandoned bunkers. No? And And when I studied architecture, because I studied architecture in Paris, Le Corbusier is a very important architect for us, no? And so you have the first half uh, part of the of the work of Le Corbusier, which was, which is those uh, white boxes, modern architecture, and this is and there is all the work after the Second World War, no? Which is like more like the this brutalist uh, concept, uh, uh, everything made out of raw concrete uh, is started to work like this way in Marseille for the Unité d'Habitation in Marseille, uh, in the south of France. And then at some point, he, he, he did this amazing project in India, no? the Shandiga capital. No? Um, so, 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 so I went to see Shandiga no? uh, in India, uh, which is just like a, a, an amazing project. Uh, and this is also part of it. No? Uh, the brutalist uh, concept of architecture is basically because it, 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 it was born after the Second World War when Europe was kind of bankrupt because of the of Of the, of the war and Le Corbusier came with this idea that when he when he did this building in the in the south of France in Marseille the Unité d'Habitation he came with the idea that if you give me this amount of money by a uh, quitting all the finishing of the of my architecture i will build an extra 20% so I, I, with the same money i can build a bigger building no with a 20% extra so it means uh, uh, more apartments more space more uh, and and we needed this because people they were they were living we, we, everything was uh, bombed and so people needed to have like new houses no after the second world war no so it's also a little bit The, the the philosophy of the of the brutalist architecture not trying to invest the money in what's important to make the building better or bigger no and then became like unpopular in the 70s because it was becoming like a very rough architecture and then you mix all the the, the social condition around this no and 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 so it became kind of uh, it, it, it 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 became a, a little bit uh, a problematic kind of architecture no but there is always the other part of the brutalist architecture which i think are more uh, related with which is like the 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 tropicalized uh, the the tropical brutalist no brutalism no like the one you can see for example in brazil no and this is a little bit also uh, the reason why I, I i like it so much because if you see brutalist architecture in paris or in london it will look a little bit sad or it will look gray and it's ra raining often no if you do it in mexico in the tropical area of mexico with all the palm trees and all this uh, uh, exuberant uh, vegetation you have around with the, the the balance between the gray of the concrete and the the green of the of the plants so it makes like a it has totally it, it, it will you you feel you feel a, a, a total different atmosphere no so this is why also i like it no because i live in mexico and i work a lot in the in the tropical uh, part of mexico it also something which is very important is the same in india no when i when i discovered chandiga i was totally fascinated with this because in europe Uh, you have the winter, no? So if you work in United States, if you work in Europe, you will have to take care of the cold and the winter. If you work in a tropical country like uh, Philippines, Indonesia, Mexico, uh, Brazil, no? Uh, what you have to do basically, you have to you, you have to let the the building open. So like this, the, the 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 air can cross the building, no? And we work like this a lot in Mexico, in the tropical uh, region of Mexico. Uh, working with the natural cross ventilation no 
Yeah, great. Yeah, I think it also goes back again to locality and this idea that architecture should be local and vernacular, right? To exactly. And if you look at the the the, the vernacular local architecture, it will be like this. It it will be like a very open architecture, no, and like letting the air breathe, no, all the time. Because and that's funny because now you can close your building if you want because we have air conditioning, no, but the back in the time when when they did not have air conditioning the only way to survive would have would have been to have a good ventilation so lastly how do you think should vernacular architecture be adapted or perceived in the future well this is a little bit this for me you know it's like a, this is this is this is what i do enjoy now uh, thanks to Mexico, no, because if I if if I would have stayed in Europe, in Africa, if I would have stayed in France, I would understand the world in a total totally different way, no. And because I really like this, no, I really like the the the, the possibility to work uh, with local people in a simple way. Uh, I would say a little bit like maybe like my grandfather, my French grandfather would have worked, no, uh, at this time no so we have uh, less rules in mexico we have more freedom it's a it's a country where everything is possible no and it's a little bit uh, thanks to this to the to the to, to the fact that uh, that that that, that you, you we work in a with with a we with a totally uh, different goal than the what, what what we would do in 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 france no in france there is a lot of rules and you have to follow the rules otherwise you would just get in trouble and you 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 they, they won't let you build uh, this way no and so this is what i'm part of my philosophy is also this no like instead of trying to 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 give a solution to everything thanks to the technology the 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 way we work a little bit in europe i'm more like i i want to 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 make it in a more simple way no so basically this is this my the, what i'm doing no it's like uh, just a few material, just like ve uh, like like, uh, like what's necessary. Get uh, rid of the unnecessary, and it's a little bit the aesthetic of my architecture and what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to to keep it simple instead of uh, bringing a lot of uh, technology on it. No, so it's it's a sort of low tech architecture that I'm doing. No, basically, it's really inspiring. Yeah, thanks so much for sharing today. We learned a lot about vernacular architecture. And I think another thing that I really like is the concept of aging and embracing it. Um, I think how you're already thinking about uh, what you make will look like or will be adapted to 20 or 30 years down the line and hence preparing for it is already like a sustainable way of approaching the field. Exactly, it's a little bit this, no? It's like I, 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 I'm, if, if you think that your architecture will get old and you make everything possible to get old, no? So basically it's not like a, because it's always like, you know, like the, like, like the, the sort of, argumentation I will have against me you now when you use the concrete yeah, it's true. You no, know, it's a lot of contamination. The the concrete, the all the industry of the concrete. You no, know? but it's it's like if you see that my architecture will maybe work for uh, for at least like the next thirty years with very low maintenance, without using uh, because if you make a, something out of wood, every year you would have to put like chemical product on it. You now, and those chemicals they would go in inside of the earth. So it's maybe yeah, the 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 the, the day I will deliver my building i'm contaminating maybe a bit more than other person no but if you calculate 30 years after maybe i will get this way in balance no so it's a little bit this not trying to 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 make the time be part of the architecture no because it's always something for architects it's difficult to imagine that the building will get old but we all know that this building will get old. So basically this is what i'm trying to do since the very first day to integrate the time as part of my architecture that's cool yeah thanks again for sharing you're welcome <laughs>